Happy Friday, everyone. It's going to be a great show tonight. Uh, but first, a disclaimer. Warning, Greg had an endoscopy earlier today and is still coming down from a strong anesthetic. We are not responsible for anything he says during the following show. It's true. Not lying. So it's an especially happy Friday for me because, yes, I just had an endoscopy. That's when they shove a tiny camera down your throat to see how stuff's working. Everything seems okay. The best part is that video's ratings were still higher than CNN's. <laughs> But thankfully, uh, they didn't find anything scary, except for Dana Perino's class ring. <laughs> There's a few diamonds missing from it, but I'm hoping my proctologist will find those next week. <laughs> but in order to do that procedure, they put me on a drug that knocked me out. So forgive me if I make less sense than Joe Biden speaking without a teleprompter. <laughs> but at least I know what it's like to be cat. Uh... Anyway, <laughs> last night, a debate erupted over the Brooklyn Nets guard Kyrie Irving, who's refused the COVID vaccine. Now, I don't follow professional badminton, but this is now a big deal <laughs> since New York City requires proof of the vax for entry into the arena where the Nets play. So on Tuesday, the Nets said Irving won't play until he's vaxxed, but he ain't doing it. I mean, what would you do? What would you do? You know, if, if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh, when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine. I'm staying grounded in what I believe in. It's just as simple as that. It's not about being anti-vax or about being, uh, you know, on one side or the other. Like, it, it's just really about being true to what feels good for me. I chose to be unvaccinated and that was my choice and I would ask y'all just to respect that choice. Now, what's interesting about this story isn't Irving's reasoned opinion, but how it affects people who hear it. It's now a pickup game of the shirts versus the skins. See what I did there? <laughs> Check out the debate on this intriguing program. It features five panelists, <laughs> one really, really hot guy. <laughs> and it's on at 5 p.m., but I can't remember the name. Rules are rules. Yeah. This guy is wrecking his life right now for no real reason, yeah. and it's absolute stubbornness based oh, so, on so Jesse. nothing. Geraldo, you're mad at this guy. I you're, am you're, mad at no, him. No, you're mad at him. Because he's full. He's, 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 he's not just hurting himself. No, but what I'm he's saying hurting is everybody like Jesse played. who invested in the played. Brooklyn Nets. But you're being played. You are being... You're, you're, you're pitting your... You're being stubborn. No, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm you trying are, to explain. You're, you're being blockheaded. Listen, no, can I finish my point? <laughs> you are being manipulated to disagree with somebody. This is an artificial division, and we shouldn't play into this. I this is what the mandate did. You know, it's weird watching yourself on TV while you're on TV. <laughs> Don Lemon does that to double his viewership. <laughs> anyway, I fear that Geraldo missed my point, that the anger he felt toward Irving was not caused by Irving at all. It's caused by the situation created by people in power in order to create conflict, to keep us at each other's throats, like Joy and Whoopi fighting over the last eclair in the green room. Oh my God. The elites, they like sweets. The elites are trying to fight a proxy war with each other through the citizens. And unfortunately, it seems to be working. Irving was trying to focus on getting a shot in the net, not getting a shot in the arm. But Geraldo felt genuine anger toward him. The same kind I feel towards Kilmeade when he won't return my swim trunks. <laughs> Doesn't even own a pool. <laughs> But the anger is misplaced. It's fury manufactured by the establishment who are scared to death of liability and therefore risk. But they're also terrified of you and me or me and Geraldo if we happen to ever agree, which is hard to do when you're looking at that mustache. <laughs> that thing's a whole different kind of two-pointer. <laughs> little sports joke. But if we all got along despite our political, health, or height differences, it makes it that much harder for the aristocracy to control you and for the media to make a buck. The people in power lose power when we resist the traps that they set for us. We've seen how division is egged on through media narratives that aren't true and politicians who need a target. CNN fostered the anti-police narrative and wove it into a racial conflict that has since mushroomed into a stelter-sized monstrosity of lies and identity politics. Others who wish to pit the sexes against each other do so because it makes careers in academia and jobs for people and human resources. 
They do this with gays and straights, trans and gays, dogs and cats, fox and friends. <laughs> Conflict sells. That's why every good Bond film has a Bond villain. And it's why CNN, The View, MSNBC suck. While we push each other around in the streets, they're raking it in with their clickbait. If only we got along, their jobs would vanish faster than a story on Hunter's laptop, and the people's <laughs> power would grow. But now we're being pulled into new conflicts, vax versus unvax, mask versus no mask. Once you see how it's being ginned up, though, you see it everywhere. Take the NBA player. Seriously, why get mad over someone you don't even know who is making a decision for himself? I mean, unless it's something like talking loudly on a cell phone in a movie theater, in that case, stab the jerk. <laughs> Don't stab the jerk, that's a joke. But other than that, just realize it's CNN and Biden administration trolling you and us. Right now, it's kind of clear that someone who's young, lean, and incredibly fit, such as Kyrie and myself, <laughs> does not have the same risk profile as someone with a pre-existing condition. Unless, unbeknownst to me, Kyrie once dated Kat, he poses no threat to Geraldo, <laughs> or me, or our families. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. But we're living in a time of conformity. And when you don't conform, you're shunned like Gerald Nodler skinny dipping at a public pool. So whenever you feel yourself getting angry at someone else and you're only given two choices, it's a binary prison of ideas. Remember that it's a desired phenomenon created by a third party. It creates content for TV producers, and it distracts the populace from the real bad <laughs> that's going on, like crime, mental illness, and my relentless IBS caused by swallowing class rings. <laughs> if we fight amongst ourselves, we can't fight them, and they can continue ignoring real injustice and get rich off you along the way. So mandates became just another tool to split us apart. But the media's argument that there has to be a deep-seated hatred amongst Americans is much like Al Capone's vault. Once you crack it open, there's nothing really there. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Much like when you see Geraldo shirtless. <laughs> Sadly, there's no vaccine for that. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's a successful comedian and actor, which means at one point in his career, he was also a successful waiter. Jamie Lissau. Her last name's Italian for Talks Too Fast. Outnumbered co-host Emily Campagno. His novels are so delicious, they should be in the cookbook section. Up in the air author, Walter Kern. She's got brains, she's got beauty, and if you feed her beans, she gets a little tootie. Fox News contributor, that's it. <laughs> Walter, the problem with this, it, this COVID stuff is that we cannot discount the fact... By the way, it's nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I've missed you. Good to be oh, here, man. Well, isn't that cute? Shut up, Emily. <laughs> We cannot discount the fact that people, when given the chance to feel righteous, you know, from flight attendants to TV anchors, will take that shot, right? And that's what I feel like what we're seeing. What do you think? When I was a kid, we used to read a short story in high school called The Lottery. Mm -hmm. And it was about a small Protestant hometown in, uh, uh, I think, Vermont, mm -hmm. where every year to make the crops grow, the farmers formed a circle, picked one person, and stoned them to death. Oh, really? And so there's an ancient instinct in people to uh, make a scapegoat pay for all the difficulties of life, you know, mm -hmm. in the thought that maybe, you know, it'll bring back normalcy if we sacrifice them. And, and today it's him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I remember when Muhammad Ali wouldn't go to the Vietnam War. Right. Uh, professional athletes are people, too. Mm -hmm. We treat them like uh, paid circus performers. Then they come out, show they have a conscience, and that they don't need the applause and acclaim mm -hmm. that we give them. And uh, personally, he's made all the right decisions about his body his whole life. Yeah. He made it into the NBA. Right. I think he's probably still making them and that he's suddenly a moron is ridiculous. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, the lottery, so you're saying that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, not if you want the crops to grow. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Some things take priority, Jamie. Long time since I've seen you. It's You've been living in, uh, where do you live now? Still in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska? Fair, Fairbanks, Alaska. That's yeah. right. I try to get geographically as far away from where I would be successful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you've done quite well for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you were successful in your failure. Uh-huh, yeah. yes. What do you make of this whole st story? Where do you stand or sit? Can I say, first of all, I know you had the endoscopy this morning and yeah. you're on some drugs. I wanted to apologize right off the bat. I'm also on some painkillers because this morning I had uh, access to some. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> so, but, that might be the best joke I've ever heard. <laughs> but then again, I'm really high, so what, is, what does it matter? I've told that joke before, but no one could hear it because I was in Alaska. Um, <laughs> I feel like, I think Kyrie's brave. Yes. I think he's, he's, a, he's a brave guy. And I think it's impressive because he's a rich guy. I think we yeah. could say he makes... Um, $400,000 a game, I yes. think I saw. Is that true? Yes. Greg, for $4,000, I would take the anthrax vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> I really would. And uh, and you could say, and then I was thinking, like, he could have gone the way, like, I know LeBron, I think Stephen Curry got the Johnson Johnson. Yes. So he could have just gone with that, which they just released today that they're saying the Johnson Johnson vaccine is just as effective as just having one of those little circular band-aids. <laughs> so... Good to see you, Jamie. It's good to see so you. So much talent. <laughs> such a such an empty state. <laughs> it's so I don't know what I'm saying. Emily, what, don't you feel this debate could be easily settled if we just got rid of lawyers and the media? From the room. I, 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 go ahead. Hey. <laughs> yes. You're, I was just you're a give... in the media and a lawyer. <laughs> well, I was going to say, but now, I feel like I shouldn't now. You don't deserve it. But that I don't think <laughs> that disclaimer in the beginning passes legal muster. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, but look, here, here's what kills me about that. So Kyrie actually said it best himself in the beginning. He said, what would you do if you were told there would be exemptions, mm -hmm. exceptions, alternatives? Mm -hmm. Look at Andrew Wiggins from the Warriors who applied for a religious exemption and he was denied. Mm. We were told that COVID negative tests would suffice for yeah. these athletes that chose not to get them the vaccine. In fact, we were told that within New York City, we were told that within the federal government, mm -hmm. but that encroachment just keeps creeping. And so Kyrie can stand to lose, yes, $15.5 million, which he will this season. That means he can stand to lose it if he is. Mm -hmm. But what about all of those Navy sailors mm -hmm. that are being dishonor or discharged less than honorably and they're losing their veterans benefits? Mm -hmm. They're losing their pension. These are hardworking Americans that have served our country that are losing everything that have mouths to feed because they have chosen to have autonomy over their body and made their own personal decision, religious or otherwise. But if it doesn't pass that, that arbitrary test according to some coach or some medical examiner yeah. at that moment, then it hasn't been approved. So the, the mandate, he's absolutely right, and the mandate is what is difficult to stomach and everyone stepping up against them with whatever whatever platform they have, we should applaud rather than condemn. Yeah, it's, I don't, there you go. By the way, I don't even think it's the team. It's, it's, the, it's the edict from the, uh, from the government in New York that's forcing the team's hand, which is what we're seeing. We're seeing the government freelance their authoritarianism so that it's the company, all the companies now are going, hey, it's the company's choice to do that, and you work at the company. No, it's the government telling the company to do it by saying you can't work here. Yeah, yeah. and we've all just gone completely crazy because you watch that video and he says, it's my choice I'm asking you to respect my choice. Yeah. He doesn't say boycott the NBA. Yeah. He doesn't even say agree with me. He just, you know, you watch that, you hear someone say, it's my choice, respect my choice, and you think, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And you turn on the TV and people are like, no! <laughs> you know, they're just like, we're gonna talk about what a horrible person you are all night long, actually. And there's a certain point where it's just comp it's completely psychotic reaction. Yes. To someone being like, yeah, it's my choice, can you respect my choice? Yeah. Yeah, it is the uh, it is, but it, it's because we are forcing people in the prison of two ideas. There's a million ideas, but million stances between ah and hey. <laughs> there is. I don't know why my hands are still up here. <laughs> I like you, hi.
<laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. I took, I took painkillers too. Right? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Why? Why did you share? I threw my back out because I try to be stealth when I'm stoned. Am uh, I the only uh, sober one here? That's insulting to me. I know it is insulting. <laughs> it's like if you got him, you got to share them. I agree. Unless I you're, agree. Unless they're like the crappy kind. A friend did, like tram it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, on my painkillers on the back of the bottle, it said, "Do not mix with alcohol." But I read that as this would probably be pretty good if you mix it with yeah. alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I up next, diversity quotas get repealed. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.